A biotech company in Quebec has begun Canada's first human trials for a potential vaccine for COVID-19. Medicago says it gave the first doses to volunteers on Monday, so just a couple of days ago. The trial is a study of 180 healthy men and women between 18 and 55 years old. The company expects to see first results by October. But its CEO is cautioning that even if the vaccine works, it's not expected to be a cure-all. He says the first successful vaccine will likely only be part of the solution to the pandemic. Our chase team has reached the president and CEO of Medicago. His name is Bruce Clark, and he's in Burlington, Ontario. Bruce, I want to thank you for joining us and get right to it. I hear that you started on Monday with the human trials, and then you burst my bubble and say it, it's not going to be a cure-all. How does that work? Well, it's not it's not uh, not meant to be negative. I think it's really just tempering expectations. Um, we expect uh, we, we from what we've seen so far with this uh, candidate vaccine, all the right signals are there for us for an, a, a positive immune response. But I think it's really more setting expectations to balance that uh, uh, you know we this is a this is a disease that's only been around for months uh, typically uh, when you you're addressing a treatment for a disease or a vaccine you know what you're you're treating you have it well characterized but in this case we're developing a, a treatment we're developing a vaccine mm -hmm. at the same pace we're understanding the disease itself so it, it poses challenges i think there's room for optimism and hope uh, for sure but I think it just needs to be tempered that this is a this is a journey, not a destination when it comes to producing a single product. Well, you, with you and your team, uh, how much pressure have you been feeling? Because not only are we talking about people getting ill, people dying, we're also talking about economies dying, parts of the world that perhaps will take decades to recover. How much has that put on you and your team in terms of pressure? Well, I think, uh, you know, first of all, you can see the level of uh, activity worldwide and the number of countries and the number of companies that are working on solutions. So I think it's over 150 companies now working on vaccines. Um, so we feel that pressure. I mean, our, we understand our technology is is uniquely adapted to respond to these kind of crises uh, in emerging threats. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that at some level it was incumbent on us to show that our technology was appropriate and able to address this, uh, this crisis. Explain to me the timeline, because I think that's the question I get. Number one, people say, when they, you know, say hello because they watch our, our program. They say, so when is there going to be a vaccine? I'm, I'm putting the answer to you. Well, we're, uh, as you said, we're entering uh, the first phase of clinical trials, which is phase one, and really focusing primarily on the safety uh, before we go into full development in the later stages. We expect this stage to be finished um, by September so that we can go into the larger studies looking at the effectiveness of the vaccine as well as continuing to monitor safety in the fall time frame to get to our phase three studies which are very large including 10 to 15,000 subjects where we really explore the the activity the efficacy of the vaccine and formally uh, formally uh, make a, an assessment of the of the safety uh, of it as well so I'm not asking for an exact date but I am asking for a more specific timeline. <laughs> so we, we expect to start phase two in uh, October and phase three late in the year. So I'll say December with the intended completion should all the stars align by, uh, by late spring. And there are other companies, as you mentioned, around the world working. Are you working hand in hand? Do you know uh, what other companies are doing, what their stage is? Are you, are, are you competing or uh, what's that other word? You know, working together cooperating yeah. yeah no we have we have uh, just recently signed agreements with two large companies uh, for a component that will work with our vaccine to help it work better it's an adjuvant which really uh, is almost like an amplifier for the effect of, of the vaccine itself and, and so we're using other other technology that can we can leverage in in concert with our technology with our vaccine to make it work better so certainly we're watching what others are doing um, it's not really so much a race against uh, against the others as really Isn't trying it? to make sure Isn't we, it a race? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think it's a it's a race against the virus, yeah. not against a, a, the other con the companies. So I think that's the the context in which to look at it. But it's, you know, it's not a simplistic race to the finish. I think I, I described it previously as being more of a 
a triathlon or a pentathlon because the the characteristics of this vaccine because the disease is complicated we need to we need to show that it's safe it's efficacious that it the the effect is the duration is is long enough um, there's a lot of things that has to be able to be manufactured uh, there's a lot of uh, steps to hit along the way before you have a successful vaccine. You you hit on a key point there. It has to be able to be manufactured. And, you know, we've all seen those sci-fi movies where only a certain percentage of the population who can afford it get the vaccine and they all get to live. How can we ensure that we have the ability to produce enough of this vaccine once it gets to that stage in Canada for Canadians? Well, we're working currently building a large facility in Quebec City uh, mm -hmm. that will, when, when completed, will be able to deliver a billion doses on an annual basis. Um, and we currently have a facility in, in North Carolina that's our commercial production facility, which we can produce uh, 100 to 120 million doses on an annual basis out of that facility. So capacity, uh, it doesn't matter what company you're talking about, even the very large companies, no one is going to have capacity to cover the world. So it's going to be a multifaceted solution. There are going to be multiple companies involved. There'll be multiple products involved. And I think that's the way it has to be in the early days in order to make sure that we have the coverage uh, that we need. Final question for you, Bruce. I know everybody wants to produce a vaccine uh, and, and those who are going to, to take it want to take it. This is, this is about medicine, but it's also a business. I mean, could finding the vaccine, the right vaccine, after all your trials in Canada, at your plant in Quebec, mean bazillions of dollars for you? You know, I think we're not, uh, in this case, looking to be uh, build a company on one product. I think the, the, with something as critical as this, we have to make sure that it's accessible to, to as many people as possible. Um, but it is a business, so we mm -hmm. have to make sure that we're sustainable for the long term because we have a technology that addresses not just, just COVID. We are a vaccine company, but we also produce antibodies, therapeutic antibodies, and we have to make sure that this technology um, it really doesn't isn't just a flash in the pan, uh, and so we we are we have a flu vaccine that's currently under review with Health Canada, which will also help us on the commercial front. But we look forward to a, a long and productive uh, career as a company, with making significant healthcare contributions as we go. I mean, a crisis like COVID, but also in in predictable, more predictable situations like the seasonal flu. I want to thank you for your time, Bruce. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And be well. Pleasure. Bruce Clark is president and CEO of Medicago, and we reached him in Burlington, Ontario.